And aloha, welcome to another edition of Hawaii in Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin Griffin. And for those of you who may not have seen the program in the past, here on the program we talk about what's happening with the veterans, military community, and the tie-in with the, um, uh, the rest of the state. Uh, as I mentioned before, there are a lot of talented people within the military who uh, make a lot of great contributions. Uh, now we know this is a um, uh, all volunteer military. And uh, anyway, before we get into our subject matter today, I have Ms. Helen Dora Hyden, who's a um, veteran herself, and uh, a couple of her friends she brought along with her from Toastmasters, and we'll be talking with them very shortly. Just want to make one comment real quick. As I mentioned in the past, there are a lot of things that go on within our country, not only here on a national level, but also on a local level, that have a major impact. Recently, I got into a conversation with um, a couple of individuals, and one of the issues that came up, we talked about what's happening, the policies with the um, uh, with our government house being enforced overseas. And one individual interjected that he thought that uh, sometimes when there is something that may be let's say not popular with the American people that the military is supposed to express their satisfaction about it. And I disagree with that. Again, what I'm making about to say right now is a personal comment. Most of the individuals, majority of the individuals who are serving the military, very dedicated. They've given, many of them given up a lot of um, opportunities on the civilian side. But one of the things, I know that there is some uh, concern about not only with this administration, but with other administrations in the past. But the consensus that we had arrived, this small informal group I talked with, is that the role of the individuals in uniform is to obey the laws and regulations of the military. If we do have any type of questions about some of the policies, there are mechanisms in place to make sure that they are addressed. We have people who are, are currently in uniform, and again, some of them may not agree with what's going on, but as far as with the traditions and what this country stands for, what they represent, they see the big picture. They do exercise their right as a civilian when they're out of uniform to make sure that if there is something that they're not happy with, that they either support local um, politicians or get involved. Uh, we find that the military are very giving. You know, we have, with the military population over here, we have close to 120,000 vets, give or take. And that is, has a major impact on the state of Hawaii and also on our country. But the one thing that we did um, agree on, the, the individuals I was talking about, is that, again, when there are issues, and we do speak up about it, and there is a mechanism in place, in a hostile environment is not the time to debate political issues. There's plenty of time after that. And I do believe that a lot of the Individuals, I don't want to be redundant about this, but one way <clears throat> that you can help support our military is to exercise your rights as citizens. When you get out there and you vote, you get involved in the, in the communities and everything else, this helps to reinforce what these individuals stand for. And I'll let this one go as far as that's concerned, but the thing is, exercise your rights as citizens. Get out there. There are too many people that's put their lives on the line for the principles that we all believe in and stand for, and we'll just take it from there. But right now, at this point, just want to introduce Ms. Hyden to the program. Thank you, Cal. Thank you. Um, sorry for the diatribe, anyhow, but no um, the thing is, you know, some people people do have the um, the concern about what the military think about and the, and the veterans. And again, as I mentioned, there's a time and a place, and uh, most of the individuals who do, you know, get involved, you know, they realize that fully. Like, say, they have a major responsibility, you know. So, if the civilian side is thinking that there's going to be some kind of um, dialogue that's going to be 
started within the military, that's not the right place. So again, there's a time and place for everything. But you're yourself, or you're a uh, veteran also. I am. I did four years in the Army. Uh -huh. My father did 22 in the Army. My son's active duty Air Force currently stationed here in Hawaii. Uh -huh. Long legacy. Uh -huh. And I've been a veterans advocate for the past 25 years, yeah. educating mm -hmm. veterans on VA benefits. Mm -hmm. And what shocks me, even with the media outpouring of all the benefits out there, a lot of veterans still don't know especially combat vets, yeah. that they have five years free medical once they get out of the military. Yeah. And I've, I've met numerous veterans on island that it impacts. Uh -huh. And so I love the idea that uh, we, we still, as civilians, after we get out, still serve the veteran community and their families. Yeah. That's what, you know, uh, we do have issues that we have to deal with, of course, with the VA and other, sure. other um, entities out there. But um, the thing is, we... Uh, we all know <laughs> how important, those familiar with the military community, how much we do give back, you know, and as far as communications, because part of what you're doing right now with Toastmasters is communicating, teaching people how to talk, or talk to, how to communicate, and I think that's very important, but I think that's one of the skills that being in the military, again, where these individuals, you have to take a leadership role at some time, you know, yes. whether you're a buck private or, you know, whatever you are, um, at some point, you have to take responsibility for your mission and for those around you you know so yes. that is a start you know as far as doing that but I know also verbal communications is extremely important you know because the old saying sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me that's wrong you know we know <laughs> that for a fact you know uh, there's so many ways that uh, words can be used or weaponized and all that you know so um, you know we'll talk more about that there. I've been very fortunate to invite veterans, especially at HPU, to come into Toastmasters. Uh -huh. Many of them have had leadership in the military. The problem that a lot of veterans face when they get out into the civilian world uh -huh. is how to translate their military skill set over to the, the civilian sector, especially right. for jobs. Uh -huh. And Toastmasters changes lives. Right. It helps educate you to become better leaders, better communicators, uh -huh. uh, networking skills, all the things you need that are transferable for your future. Right. So that's kind of why I got involved in Toastmasters mm -hmm. to begin with mm -hmm. is to help me in those areas, okay. effective listening, stuff like that. And I see you have two more sidekicks with you. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you like to introduce yourself so I don't screw up your name and everything else. Get off to a bad start. That's not bad. But it's not good for my public image. But okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cal, yeah. for having us on mm -hmm. the show today. Yeah. It's just wonderful that we're able to participate with you on transference of veterans into the world through yeah. communication and leadership mm -hmm. skills. And Toastmasters is all about that. Yeah. You hit it right on point mm -hmm. about how important it is to enhance your communication skills, become better leaders. Right. As my children would often say that, they're so grateful I joined Toastmasters because mm -hmm. now when they ask me something, mm -hmm. we have more peaceful communication. Yeah. Where <laughs> they can actually expect to have some kind of resolve. Right. So Toastmasters helps in so many levels yeah. from what you, where you are now to mm -hmm. where you would like to go. So okay. we're proud to be a part of Great. the Toastmaster organization. Yeah, I think a lot of people get them, you just hear Toastmasters, it's just like people sitting around just drinking and toasting. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. No. I, I've been asked if I make toast for a living. <laughs> <laughs> exactly more than that, but we do have mm -hmm. over 68 clubs. Yeah. I think now we hit the chart yes. with about 71, 71. Yes. Yeah, yeah, 71 clubs throughout the state, and they're on most of the neighbor islands, Kauai, mm -hmm. Maui, Big Island. Mm -hmm. So everyone is welcome to come and visit, mm -hmm. enjoy, mm -hmm. and then hopefully they take away from that yeah. wanting to be a member. Great. Okay. And Janet? Hi, Calvin. I'm Janet Andres, mm -hmm. and I'm the Program Quality Director mm -hmm. for District 49 Toastmasters. Yeah. And basically, I'm in charge of all the education and training and our conferences and speech contests. Mm -hmm. That's what I oversee. Right. Great. Okay. Um, again, by now, oh, we're going to cover as much as we can by now. But again, getting back to the military, for those who may be actively serving or, you know, affiliated, uh, do you encourage, what encouragement do you give as far as them to get involved and how will it help them as far as with their, you know, mission performance in any way? 
We have clubs that are on the military bases, mm -hmm. Hickam, Pearl Harbor, uh, very active clubs. Mm -hmm. Actually, Hickam Club just made Presidents Distinguished, the highest honor you could make as a club wow. with the leadership that they had there. Mm -hmm. And we have new officers. Mm -hmm. They just had new elections mm -hmm. and brand new leadership coming in. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the new members that join say, hey, I want to become a first shirt one day. What? Are, mm -hmm. what maybe Toastmasters can help me communicate better because I know I have to do briefings yeah. and I'm terrified. Mm -hmm. So Toastmasters is a wonderful, warm environment mm -hmm. that's safe and friendly to practice. Mm -hmm. And that's what I call it my one hour of happy. Yeah. So mm -hmm. people always encourage, and it's done at your pace, mm -hmm. which I absolutely adore about Toastmasters. No pressure, all friendly environments. Yeah. Because uh, you have individuals, of course, within the military environment, and you have your military speaky, if you want to take a military language. And again, it's really important as far as when you, um, uh, you're in contact with the civilian populace, you know. Again, there's certain words, phrases that are, you know, um, appropriate within the military environment. But when you get outside, when someone hears that word or phrase, whatever, it may mis be misconstrued, you know. So then it has a negative blowback on those representing the, you know, the, the military. You Absolutely. Know. Do you see it? That's a very good point, Cal. Yeah. What has happened in Toastmasters clubs across the country? Globally, we have over 300,000 members. Mm -hmm. Toastmasters is an international organization, uh -huh. and it's here to empower members to have improve their communication skills, yeah. enhance their leadership abilities. And what's interesting that you should bring up about the language differences. Mm -hmm. There's language differences between military, civilian, as well as foreigners. Mm -hmm. This year, for the first time, we are bringing on a new club that is bilingual. Oh, okay. Most of the time they will have Chinese yeah. language meetings as well as English. So we're welcoming mm. culture yeah. of many ways of, to communicate. But for the military, you're correct. So when they belong to the military club, mm -hmm. it's a safe environment for yeah. them where they can then speak the way they're accustomed to speaking, the lingo, mm -hmm. and then there are 60 to 70 other clubs that they also can visit right. and get that experience of what it's like on those premises mm -hmm. where you're outside of the military world. Good. All right. Helen, what else would you like to interject as far as what can, what can, what can you guys do to help improve all of our lives so we'll be singing Kumbaya at the end of the day? <laughs> I'm not sure about the singing part. We can try. It's interesting. Rose hit a point that uh, I often forget, no. the interpersonal relationship. Mm -hmm. All of us interact with one another. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really vital that we openly um, communicate. And Toastmasters brings a level of transparency mm -hmm. and comfort uh, for communication purposes. I know my personal relationship with my son, who's an adult mm -hmm. now, has greatly improved because of my Toastmaster experience. Yeah. I'm a much more active listener. Mm -hmm. uh, we have evaluations at Toastmasters. When you give a speech, you get immediate feedback. Yeah. And that's something very different than corporate America or military. Mm -hmm. In the military, you know as I do, one year, once a year, you get an evaluation. Mm -hmm. With Toastmasters, you give a speech, you get feedback immediately. Yeah. So you can improve. Yeah. And that's a gift that I, I never got before. Yeah. And the effective listening, my mind goes as fast sometimes that I can't catch up with my mouth. <laughs> and Toastmasters has taught me to really pay attention to what people are saying and tricks to use like mirroring back, par par parroting, and mm -hmm. things like that, skill sets yeah. that you can use on every level. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it's so important for Janet's role mm -hmm. because she, Janet, can explain the whole. Well, uh, since I'm in charge of programming mm -hmm. and the education, mm -hmm. we are having a new platform that's coming out in September being rolled out. Basically, it's 10 different learning paths that you can choose, mm -hmm. and you would have to take an assessment first, and it'll tell you which one you should be right. on, yeah. or you can choose your own. Mm -hmm. For example, there's one called Effective Coaching, mm -hmm. where it would focus on interpersonal communication. Uh, also, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> right. Interpersonal <laughs> communication, leadership, and coaching skills. Right. And within, within these learning paths, you have 10 required projects mm -hmm. and four electives. Mm -hmm. So it's an individualized um, 
way of learning. Mm -hmm. And you can use whatever you learn there into um, your job okay. out in the community. Great. Okay. Tell you what, we're going to let our viewers absorb what you had just said. We're going to take a short break and we'll come back. We'll continue. But uh, stay tuned and keep listening. <laughs> Aloha, my name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks to community groups to to politicians, to regulators, to the utility. So please join us Tuesdays at 1 o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. This guy looked familiar. He calls himself the Ultra Fan, but that doesn't explain all this. Why? Why? He planned this party planned the snacks, he even planned to coordinate colored shirts, but he didn't plan to have a good time. Go, 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 go. Now you wouldn't do this in your own house, so don't do it in your team's house. Know your limits and plan ahead so that everyone can have a good time. Okay, you're back with Hawaii in uniform, and again, I'm your host, Calvin. I think that's my name, right? <laughs> Sometimes I have to check my ID card to see who I am, you know, I'm a little scared. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll continue our conversation with the representatives from uh, Toastmaster. And um, uh, before we took the break, one of the things that you did point out that uh, there is, you know, the listening skills, you know, there's, there's a difference between hearing and listening. You know, Absolutely. a lot of people, they get into a conversation and it's like the louder you are, the more writer you are, that's not even a word, but anyhow, you know, it's one of those deals, you know. But again, as far as if you really want to be an effective, you know, communicator, the listening skills, you know, because uh, you know, I've been in conversations with people where, you know, you sit down and you talk to them, and they would do like 95% of the talking, and then when they get ready to get up and, you know, leave, it's been great talking to you, and the only thing you did was just sit there and listen, you know. So. What, you, what are some of the other, you mentioned before we took a break, that there was some different paths that need to be taken? Yes, there are some different paths, uh -huh. and there's 10 of them. Mm. Should, should I read all 10? No. <laughs> 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 I'm just joking. Oh, yes. okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll do a special program on <laughs> <laughs> yes, it. Is, uh, it's actually a half an hour. It'll take a, at least uh -huh. half an hour to explain. But as I said before the break, one of the paths was effective coaching, mm -hmm. which focuses on interpersonal communication mm -hmm. and leadership and coaching skills. Another path would be leadership development, mm -hmm. which is um, building communication and leadership skills. Mm -hmm. So there are many different paths that you can take, or you can take all of them if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but and each one, there are 10 required projects that you need to complete mm -hmm. and four electives. Mm -hmm. And within each path, there's five levels. Mm -hmm. And each level gets more complex as you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One question I have, uh, a lot of questions, but this is just one of them. Um, we think as far as with this type of group or the program that you are offering, for adults, what do you have for children? And because again, you have a lot of younger people who, you know, have uh, the problem as far as communicating, you know, and not only, like, say, with their with their peers, they may have, you know, too much, but still, you know. But what is in place to encourage younger people to develop their verbal skills so they can be better communicators with their, those they're interacting with? Sure. We do have a program mm -hmm. that many Toastmasters in, across the state mm -hmm. and across the world yeah. participates in called Youth Leadership. Okay. This is where Toastmaster members go out into the community, into a given school that the principal might have approved that mm -hmm. they could come in, mm -hmm. and they present a similarity of what Toastmasters is all about, mm -hmm. giving the students an opportunity to express, to impress, mm -hmm. giving them the opportunity to gain more confidence. Mm -hmm. And that way from there, as they make their way to further education or into the workforce, they have a touch of more than what they would have had if they just left. In, a, in the days when I went to high school, yeah. there was no one who said, this is how you can maintain your confidence and mm -hmm. go out there and 
get the interview done. Yeah. So that's a really good program that many of the members volunteer to do le youth leadership. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that we have what is known as speech craft, but that's more on an adult level. Right. But for the youth, we do have youth leadership. It's an excellent program. Great. Okay. Um, Yep. Excuse me, yes. Calvin. Yes. So uh, for Toastmasters, you have to be 18 years or older. Right. And the youth leadership program that Rose mentioned, it's it's a short-term version. It's about 12-week program mm -hmm. that some schools will have it as an elective, mm -hmm. like an after-school um, elective, and that students would have to sign up. Right. And there's only a small amount of students that would be able to sign up for that. Mm -hmm. And it's a project that a Toastmaster mm -hmm. can undertake yeah. and go out into the community and say, hey, would you like me to um, teach your students right. some leadership skills? Okay. So you see all the applicable yeah. skills that are happening mm -hmm. here. And Toastmasters were very proud yeah. of the fact that everything you gain from it mm -hmm. is transferable mm -hmm. to your personal life, mm -hmm. to your career, to everything that you possibly do. Yeah. And as Helen had mentioned, mm -hmm. It's not that expensive to yep. be a member. Right. right. And so I broke it down one day just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. So it's $20 for the new member kit, mm -hmm. and the most you'll pay every six months is $45, mm -hmm. depending on what month you sign up. But if you break it down, $45 every six months, it's 25 cents a day. Okay. Everybody's worth 25 cents a day and for leadership you, skills. Do you come and toast with that also? <laughs> I will toast you. <laughs> yes. Not all the yeah. point of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> After the meeting. And I must tell you, Calvin, the, the past experiences I've had with uh, Toastmasters, uh, with youth, is I've been asked to be judging mm -hmm. some of their uh, contests that they have at their schools. Mm -hmm. So people find out you're a Toastmaster, and they all of a sudden you're asked to participate on different skills that you never thought you'd ever be. Yeah. So I've been judging for quite a while now for youth and have done workshops for Impress on yeah. teaching students what the real world is like, what to expect out there. Okay. I have a question that's been sitting off in left field that I gotta bring to the infield. We talk about verbal communications, all right, there's different ways of communicating. What about those individuals who have hearing impairments or like say sign? Is there something that's in place to help them communicate better? Absolutely. Okay. Toastmasters is yeah. for everyone. Mm -hmm. We do have on the Toastmasters International website a Braille ability where you can order your books through Braille. Mm -hmm. We have actually what they call the International Public Speaking, mm -hmm. World Champion of Public Speaking for Toastmasters. And one of our World Champion winners mm -hmm. was actually blind. Mm -hmm. So it's we're open to everyone. Yeah. In Hawaii, we are fortunate to have Willie Jones, who is the world champion of public speaking, 1997 Toastmaster. Mm -hmm. And he is now with the Al Moana Club. Mm -hmm. But we have many, many uh, claims for him to speak at different functions as well as be part of our training. So every year, mm -hmm. Toastmasters encourages training. We have club officers training besides what the club offers. But the one thing about Toastmasters that's so beautiful is that when at a club level, you can be ensured that it's a safe place mm -hmm. where no one makes judgments about you. You learn as you grow. Mm -hmm. And every project layers to improvement. Mm -hmm. From where you were in the beginning, mm -hmm. we've had people say, they were shaking so much that their knees were knocking louder than they were speaking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. from there and now, mm -hmm. that same person we're proud, proud to say is our humorous mm -hmm. contest winner from the last conference, Erie Kasuje. Yeah. So there's many, many opportunities there, and we're extremely excited, and that's why we've been in it for so long. Right. Love it. When well, you uh, join, you'll love it too, okay. Cal. Okay, we'll talk. <laughs> have, you, have your people call my people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned about you know uh, training, like say within a safe environment. Okay. The reality is, once you get out there in the real world, so-called, all right, we see how the forms of communication, or we see the talking heads, or the people on TV, and you know, we got one person talking, we got somebody talking over them, and everything else. Do you have training on how to more effectively, when you run into, because it's just like a military barrage, they keep throwing things at you. Do you have ways of training where you can teach them how to handle that situation where they're not being, it appears 
years of being overwhelmed verbally with a nice form of tech. Absolutely. Some of our advanced uh, manuals talk about uh, public relations, mm -hmm. talk about speeches by management. There's a, a barrage of different programs. Mm -hmm. And one of them is about that, that interview skill set mm -hmm. and how you don't talk over people, yeah. how you give the other person the opportunity to talk and then you actively listen mm -hmm. and learn your skill set and then respond. So mm -hmm. there's tons of manuals to teach you that skill set. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm actually working on a couple advanced manuals about that situation, exactly. One right. is like radio talk host, mm -hmm. and uh, you get to participate in front of a club and get feedback. Yep. One is a television interview, ironically. Mm -hmm. and, so, <laughs> and so you learn skill sets like that. I got to take that course. <laughs> Before I move on, uh, I just wanted to mention, you mentioned Willie Jones Rose. Willie, Willie is a Vietnam vet. Mm -hmm. So here's another veteran out in the community that has done amazing things yep. and transferred his, his skill set using Toastmasters to become a world champion yep. in 1997. Okay. Amazing. Great. We're getting out to the wire, but I want to give you the opportunity to go ahead and besides reading off. <laughs> uh, if there's anything else. <laughs> yes, there is. Yeah, we well, want, well, share with you. We want you to know that Toastmasters stays connected with everyone through magazines oh. as well as the website and different video I read, I read once. You read one of these? No, I read once. I didn't once. say that. Oh, okay. Well, we bought you a truckload of them. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I do want to say thank you so much for having myself and our other key three yeah. on your program yeah. today. And from, on behalf of the District 49 yeah. and Toastmasters International, we thank you, Cal, for being part of helping the world communicate better and helping us all become better leaders because as all Miss America and Universe pageants have often said, the key to world peace is communication and leadership. Even if you didn't hear it, mm -hmm. and even if I might make a little bit of it up, mm -hmm. it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but for myself, the district director for District 49, yeah. and Janet, mm -hmm. and Helen, okay. thank you so much. No, and as we say in our district mm -hmm. this month, mm -hmm. Shaka. Thing, please. Um, as my position as club growth director, if anybody wants to start a club in their business or in their organization, please reach out to me. That's my role this year as club growth director is retention and marketing and new clubs. Love to hear from you. Okay. Um, with that in mind, anyhow, yeah, something that organizations or you know even individuals can get out there and uh, contact you guys and um, your organization. Excuse me for that. But um, yeah, I want to thank you again for coming on. But again, with the program, what we try to do here is to you know show the interaction between the military communities, the civilian side, and how we can help to enhance our overall experiences being citizens, you know, of our country and the state. Anyhow, you know, so um, I thank you for what you do. I think it's a very valuable service, you know, because communications is extremely important nowadays. Too, we, too many times we're talking at each other instead of listening. And as you mentioned, the skills that you help to develop, um, they come in handy. And again, um, the more we communicate, the better we can go ahead and teach each other, each other how to sing Kumbaya. <laughs> Shall we sing? I want to thank the viewers out there for again for uh, watching the program. And um, again, you know, the early comments I made, anyhow, uh, we have a lot of dedicated people and help them to help you by being good citizens, getting involved. When they can't speak, you can be their voice or help to communicate for them. But thank you, God bless, and until that time.